Hello, is your stomach healthy or is it in trouble? Today I'm going to talk about the seven warning signs of stomach cancer and why it's important to know more about this type of tumor. It is the fourth most common cancer in men and the sixth most common in women. And it can be silent. Knowing more about it can save lives, sometimes your own. I'm going to break this video into two parts. The first part is about the signs and symptoms of stomach cancer. And in the second part, which I think is more important, I'm going to talk about prevention. Some things that we can do in our daily lives that could prevent stomach cancer from developing. But I'm also going to talk about H. pylori and other risk factors. For example, did you know that there are two blood types that put you at higher risk for stomach cancer? I hope that's not your type, so stick around to the end and find out. What are the seven warning signs that something might be wrong with your stomach? Seventh symptom of stomach cancer, pain at the top in the mouth of the stomach. Pain in the stomach occurs in most patients with stomach cancer. This pain is usually epigastric in the upper part of the stomach. The patient says it's in the mouth of the stomach. It can often be confused with reflux, gastritis, or ulcers. The pain is usually described as a pressing pain, a discomfort in the stomach area. It can range from mild to severe and can radiate to the back. You need to be aware if it has recently appeared or has changed in nature. Persistent pain in the stomach area that worsens after meals deserves your attention. There are also patients who feel pain when the stomach is palpated. This should also be investigated. Sixth symptom, dark stools. Look closely. If your stools have changed color, they've become dark, really black, with a paste-like sticky texture, with a very strong odor. When I say strong, I mean very, very strong. This is called melina. Normally, this dark, tarry stool is caused by blood from the stomach that has passed through the entire intestine, and the blood has been completely digested. Of course, there are other causes of melena, such as esophageal varices, peptic ulcers, or duodenal ulcers, but stomach cancer should always be considered. And the presence of melena is considered a medical emergency because it indicates bleeding. So, if you're bleeding a little bit, your stools probably won't look like this. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'll say it again. Any significant change in your stool should be investigated. It doesn't necessarily mean stomach or bowel cancer, but it's always best to check with your doctor. Fifth symptom, feeling full after eating a small amount of food. One of the most common symptoms of stomach cancer is the feeling that you've eaten too much when you've eaten too little. That quick, premature, strange feeling of fullness. You take two bites and you're already full. It feels like you've eaten an ox. When a person has stomach cancer, there is a delay in emptying the stomach. Food may stay in the stomach longer than normal. Also, if the tumor is large, it can block the stomach. The stomach may become hard and not expand properly. The tumor may also produce substances that suppress hunger. And also, the person may have nausea, vomiting, and sometimes when the person vomits, there may be some rays of blood or even a kind of dark nickel. Fourth symptom, tiredness, fatigue, shortness of breath. Check it out. Almost a month ago, I saw a 49-year-old patient who came to see me because he thought he had a heart problem. He said, Doctor, I have heart failure. You have heart failure? You're 49. Why would you think that? He told me, well, when I go up the stairs in my house, I have to stop two or three times. I used to run up the stairs. There's something wrong with my heart. I went to examine him, and he was anemic. The conjunctiva of his eyes were pale. The palms of his hands weren't red. They were pale. I ordered blood tests, an endoscopy and a colonoscopy, because he said he had diffuse pain in his abdomen, and to my surprise, it turned out to be stomach cancer. He's going to have surgery first. He was lucky because even with a tumor to begin with, he had severe anemia, which was symptomatic, and he's going to be saved. To see how things are, some symptoms can't be ignored. You have to look for them. The cause of tiredness, 
Fatigue can be due to anemia, as was the case with him, or the tumor itself, which can also cause fatigue. The third symptom is bloating. Abdominal bloating, distension of the abdomen, can be a common symptom of stomach cancer. In some cases, it may not be obvious. It's the feeling of being full. But in other cases, the bloating may be invisible. An increase in the size of the abdomen after eating. This may be because the tumor irritates the mucous membrane. Changes in digestion caused by the tumor also increased gas. An excess gas can also give abdominal pain. The second symptom is weight loss without any reason. You eat normally and yet you're losing weight. Weight loss due to stomach cancer can have several reasons. First, as I said, you can't eat properly. Your stomach is always full. But another reason is that the tumor changes your metabolism, consumes your nutrients because the cells divide faster than normal. And the result is weight loss for no apparent reason. First symptom, burning and heartburn. What we call dyspeptic symptoms. It can be very similar to ulcers, gastritis, or reflux, but one thing to look out for is that this burning and heartburn may not improve with the use of antacids, and the symptoms may be persistent and progressive. It wasn't like this before, now it's worse. Many stomach problems come and go. People may think it's indigestion that will go away, or they may think heartburn is reflux. For most people, Stomach cancer isn't the first thing that comes to mind. Of course, many people have symptoms of heartburn and acid reflux. But if you have another symptom that I just talked about, or sometimes you have difficulty swallowing, there are risk factors for stomach cancer. It's very important to see a doctor to get the right diagnosis. The most important thing is early detection. The early warning signs of stomach cancer are so subtle that most people don't notice the problem until the disease is already advanced. Don't ignore the symptoms, because the sooner you find out, the better. Listen to your body, know your body, and it will make all the difference. But very importantly, some people with early stomach cancer have no symptoms at all, and that's why sometimes by the time it's discovered, it's already advanced. So having early symptoms can be an advantage, as in my patient's case, because it gives you time to find out. If it's in the early stages, it's almost 100% curable. What are the risk factors for stomach cancer? What increases your chances of developing stomach cancer? First of all, being a man. There is a difference. One in 95 men will get stomach cancer, while one in 154 women will. And the second factor is family history. And tell me, do you know anyone who has had stomach cancer? What part of the world are you from? Write it down. See, your father died of stomach cancer. His brother died of stomach cancer, and he also died of stomach cancer at the age of 51. And his son died of stomach cancer. Blood type also plays a role. Those with blood type A have a higher risk of stomach cancer, a 19% increase. Those with blood type AB also have a 9% increase. And type O is the protective type for stomach cancer. It reduces the risk. Most cases of stomach cancer are found after the age of 65. But of course, it can occur in younger people. Certain ethnic groups, including Hispanics, Blacks, Indians, and Asians. That's why the countries with the highest rates of stomach cancer are South Korea, Japan, and China. But because they take preventive measures, more than 60% of stomach cancers are treated with endoscopy. 60 to 70% have been endoscoped and removed. They don't even have to be hospitalized. Smokers have a higher risk, 200% higher risk. So do drinkers. Certain eating habits like eating too much salt. Yes, you heard right. Excessive salt increases your risk of stomach cancer. Before I go any further, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to leave a link for you to click on in the comments below to our Herbs and Foods program with recipes that explain when to use and how to get the most nutrients from foods and herbs, including which food and herb is best for each part of your body and why. In this way, 
you can correct health problems, and you can also help us maintain the channel by giving us this support. So take a look and then come back and tell our team what you think, okay? Smoked foods that contain preservatives such as nitrates and nitrites. Not eating enough fruit also increases your risk. Who has had stomach surgery? If you've had ulcer surgery or bariatric surgery, your risk is increased. H. pylori infection, which is the bacterium that causes gastritis and ulcers. H. pylori infection leads to trophic gastritis and intestinal metaplasia of the stomach. This is considered a precancerous lesion. People who are obese, especially those with abdominal fat, increase all gastrointestinal cancers. So intestine, liver, stomach, esophagus, pancreas. Those who have polyps in the stomach, pernicious anemia, where the stomach can't make intrinsic factor and the body can't absorb vitamin B12 properly. And look how important it is for those who use proton pump inhibitors. So eating prazole, so much prazole, prazosine increases your risk. There are studies that show that those who take antacids or ranitidine don't increase their risk. So it seems to be specific to prazosine. And how do you find out if you have stomach cancer? By having an endoscopy. During an endoscopy, you will be sedated and the doctor will look through a small camera to see what's going on inside your stomach. Do you have gastritis? Do you have an ulcer? Do you have a polyp or a lesion that shouldn't be there? The doctor will do a biopsy to see if you have H. pylori. The ideal, of course, is to have nothing. But if you do, it's best to have it removed by endoscopy, as the Japanese and Koreans do. So how can you protect yourself from stomach cancer? Don't smoke, don't drink, eat a healthier diet, eat fruits and vegetables that are protective, be physically active, avoid obesity, treat H. pylori if you have it. Also, those who use asferin, AS for some reason, also have a lower risk of stomach cancer. It increases gastritis and ulcers, but reduces your risk of cancer. And of course, do you feel anything? See your doctor. There were 1 million new cases of stomach cancer in the world in 22,000 and more than 700,000 deaths. That's why it's important to listen to your body, pay attention, and if you have symptoms, don't stand still, go after them. Did you like the video? Remember to share it so more people have this knowledge. And what's the next video you're going to watch? I'm going to leave my recommendation here. Until the next video, thank you very much. Stay healthy.